Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for intel, forecasts, and strategies. Hello, I'm Michael Bull. This segment is brought to you by Bull Realty for customized asset and occupancy solutions. Give me a call. I am Michael Bull or visit bullrealty.com. Well, we have an incredible show for you today. I've been really looking forward to this. We're going to cover Deloitte Insights, their 2020 commercial real estate Outlook. Now, this is a report that they put out every year. And if you own real estate, if you own a lot of real estate, you manage a lot of real estate, you control your asset manage, you own, you invest, you really want to read this report. And we're going to go over some of the highlights with Jim Barry, and he's real estate leader uh, of the U.S. for Deloitte, and he's joining us on Skype. Jim Barry, thank you for joining us, sir. Michael, thanks for having me today. I look forward to uh, to spend a little time talking to you about Deloitte's uh, commercial real estate outlook. Yeah, and it's a it's a great report. And like I said, if you own uh, real estate, you really need to read this. And uh, Jim, tell us how is this report done, uh, and and how long have you been doing it? Yeah, we've actually been publishing an outlook for several years. Uh, the 2020 outlook. We took a little bit of a different approach to it in that we actually reached out to over 750 global real estate owners and operators and asked their opinion both on how things are going overall and their general optimism uh, or pessimism about the uh, the uh, road ahead over the next 18 months. But then we also drove down and got their insights on the impacts of of things that are transforming the industry, primarily primarily around digitization. Yeah, I like it. So you're actually talking to the owners of people kind of on the ground level, right? Dealing with the tenants, dealing with the ownership issues and the and the, the, the benefits and detriments of owning the properties and develop them. So I, I, I like that about this report. So were the respondents optimistic? You know, are they afraid that we're near the end of a cycle? Are tariffs scaring them? Or they think interest <laughs> rates are going too low, it's going to wreck the world? What would they tell you? Yeah, kind of, kind of all of the above, right? No, actually, it was an interesting uh, response, and I'll also spend a little bit of time and contrast this a little bit with our survey, even from last year in 2019. A little difference of what we've done is last year we actually surveyed 500 investors, so the capital providers and what they were seeing and experiencing. And and when you go back to that survey in 2019 high level of optimism from the perspective of continuing to invest in real estate. As we looked into the 2020 and then moved over to the owner-operator side and those 750 uh, individuals that we that we surveyed, I would say it's moderating optimism at this point. Mm. And it certainly varied as you looked across you know, the various platforms, uh, but also uh, you know, across the geographies of the world. Yeah, so you're – kind of C-suite executives, I guess, mainly, right? And they're all over the world. So, you know, this is America's commercial real estate show. Right. So how did the U.S. fare? What do people feel about U.S. Uh, real estate? Are they optimistic or what? Yeah, and, and generally, yes. I mean, there's still good optimism out there. And so, like, for example, if you look at it overall, you would see uh, the level of optimism higher in Asia, followed by North America, and then uh, Europe after that. So that's kind of the stacking order from a general optimism perspective. One of the things that we really see, though, is when, you know, that it's really the impact of, hey, it has been a long cycle. What does that mean? There are a lot of outside influences that are truly, you know, concerning, whether or not it's, uh, it's uh, you know, from the global environment of Brexit or trade or some of the, just the general, you know, things that have to happen over the near term from a global perspective, overlaying against the fact there's still an abundance of capital, interest rates are still low, and foundationally, the fundamentals of real estate still are holding strong here in the U.S., so they expect things to go well for how long? Was that a was that a question you guys asked? <laughs> well, that's a dangerous question, yeah. right? So, but uh, but our, we focused on eighteen months out. We thought yeah. that was viewable. 
and uh, within line of sight. And so, you know, most of our results, and, and I should point out, our survey actually was conducted in the summer of 2019, but, uh, but we really asked for an 18-month uh, horizon in our questioning. Okay, we're talking with Jim Barry, U.S. real estate leader with Deloitte, about their 2020 commercial real estate outlook. And uh, one of the things I like that you've done in this report, you know, used to be in the old days, people said uh, real estate was about location, location, location. What do you say? <laughs> yeah, Michael, it's, it's interesting. And really the dynamics of the conversation are changing. Um, as I mentioned, there's still a lot of capital and there's still a lot of opportunity to invest in real estate. And I think overall, that is a very, very good thing for real estate. Real estate is a, a platform that exists for most investors and the place that they want to play on the long term. Uh, but there's also a realization that the, the nature of real estate has really foundationally changed. And so that point about, you know, the the, the old adage about location, 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 while location is still very foundational and very important, it's not the only thing. And so the, the phrase we're referring to in our 2020 is, is more around location, experience, and analytics. And how do the three of those really play in how people are making real estate decisions? Right. And the experience you're meaning for kind of the users of the real estate, right? Maybe uh, maybe they're the tenants uh, and then also the patrons of the tenants, right? Exactly right, Michael. So anymore, when you think about someone coming in and, and, and going through a real estate experience, what are they really questioning? What are they really asking about? And so it really comes down to pushing through uh, and saying, hey, who are the end users? What are you as the tenant really trying to accomplish? both from a strategic standpoint within your organization or within your use of that real estate, and ultimately your interaction with the end user. You know, one of the things I love about real estate, and I've been doing this for, you know, 34 plus years, is that we have always had the luxury in our industry of having a great dynamic with our tenants. I mean, you know, we are have the ability to be strategic with them uh, and have, you know, for a long period of time. But really, the opportunity now is to become even more strategic, to really partner even better with our tenants. So, uh, as I mentioned before, rather than a place to be and a place to work or a place to uh, to shop or, you know, kind of that uh, location destination. Now it's really partnering to say, how do we improve through the use of data and analytics and, and better align with the use of technologies today to your ultimate end user? And how do we help you advance your strategy, both from a people and a, and a ultimate end user perspective? Yeah. Yeah. And, and owners of real estate obviously realize the importance of taking care of their tenants and providing a great product and environment for them. But, but Jim, there are a lot of changes in technology and artificial intelligence. So what are these uh, owners that are, are doing, the, doing the right thing, if you will? What are they doing? Right. And, you know, so there's a lot of good, good information out there. I'll, I'll share one uh, piece of the data that, on the tenant experience. And so when we surveyed those, those 750 individuals, one of the things that they came back with is that 64%, 64%, that's meaningful, of those surveyed are actually looking to increase their, their amount of spend and have been increasing their amount of spend on technology associated with the tenant experience. But then 46%, only 46% considered that a core competency within their organization. That's a meaningful gap that exists. And I think it really says that for real estate companies today, they recognize the importance. They're moving down that path uh, and trying to align with that. But there's still a lot of questions on how to manage that and what to do. How do you use the technologies that are there today? Who are the right groups to partner with? Um, how far can you go? And even a lot of things on data in and of itself and how and what data you have access to and how to use it. Yeah. And are they talking about investing in technology based on kind of more smart buildings or is it more kind of the tenant experience? Is it more on um, sustainability and wellness? You know, where are they kind of focusing to, to help tenants mainly? 
Yeah, it, it's really, uh, once again, I think you, you know, I would say all those things are in play. The tenant experience part is really, I'd say, a cornerstone to several of those things. So you mentioned smart buildings. Uh, when we when we think about smart buildings and the evolution of smart buildings, if you kind of reel it back just a few years ago, you know, I think a lot of what we were talking about were operational things uh, and how to make better operate a building from from the use of smart technologies as the internet of things has continued to expand and artificial intelligence has continued to to expand in its capabilities you know now there's really an opportunity to make the the entire experience completely different so thinking about you know when you think about the internet of things you think about hey how does it, how does how do our tenants and the, and the individuals who are coming in, you know, whether or not they're the employees or whether or not they're the users, uh, you know, whether or not shopping or whatever, how are they actually going to interact with the space? Can they come in and immediately download the app and find better location? How do they really deal with it from the individual interaction with not just a, a one tenant but the entire tenancy of a building? With our with the employees, how security factored in, you know, and from a perspective of not just uh, the security of the building and the structure itself, but the security for the individuals as well, and how best to, to interact with those things as well. So it's really an expanding area, and uh, and I think what the the nature of this uh, of this ability is really not just about finding the cool toys; it's about finding how people live, and so this real meaningful aspect of the on-demand economy and how is that really interacting with the uh, with the tenants and the end user yeah well I think it's right on that where your respondents talked about you're investing 64 percent into uh, technology and then then knowing that they don't really have the, the competencies for it because you know I, I saw going a lot of office buildings I sell office large office buildings and in some very nice buildings and there's a lot of technology that you kind of look around and go they don't have this. They don't have that. There, there are a lot of opportunities, but you got to have a return to do it. You got to have the people right. to do it. Everything seems to be getting uh, more affordable. And uh, I want to ask you some more about the report and provide some more tips and strategies for people who own commercial real estate. We'll take a short break. Stay with us. I'm Michael Bull. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. America's Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty. For customized asset and occupancy solutions, visit bullrealty.com. Commercial Agent Success Strategies, incredible training for commercial agents. Visit commercialagentsuccess.com. 